the 4K video capability of the GH4 has rather overshadowed the fact that it is just as much a stills camera as it is movie and that most of the camera's state-of-the-art autofocus facilities are more relevant to stills than to video which is often used on manual focus. Here's a rundown of the focusing features. The first thing that occurred to me was this. If I'd been making this video when I was a working pro it would have been about 10 seconds long. How to focus your Nikon F. This is a focusing ring. Turn it until your subject is in focus. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Things are a little more complicated with your GH4. You can still manually focus, of course. Here's an example. Or you could have the camera look after it, like this. The choice makes itself, really. So, to start at the beginning and the most basic setting, focus release priority. Set it to focus and if the picture will not be sharp the shutter won't fire. Set it to release and the shutter will fire whatever the state of the focus. I use focus because most pictures that I do nowadays would have no value at all if out of focus. If I was still a newsman I'd use release because capturing the moment is of the essence. The next most basic setting is how you initiate autofocus. You have two ways of focusing. One, and the most commonly used, is by a half press on the shutter. That requires shutter AF to be set to ON. The other is by the button in the middle of the focus mode lever mount. That requires AF AE lock to be set to AF ON. Whether you use either or both, AF operation is the same. Note that, slightly confusingly, Panasonic talks about focus mode and AF mode. Focus mode is controlled by the focus mode lever and boils down to manual, focus once when you press the shutter halfway or keep on altering the focus while the release is half pushed. AF mode controls the way the focusing is done for the setting chosen with the focus mode lever. Now let's take a look at how it all works starting with AFC, AFF set on the focus mode lever. This is used in conjunction with AFS, AFF on the recording menu. Set to AFS, when you press the shutter the camera focuses and remains focused on the same distance all the time it is held. Press the shutter fully and the picture is taken. It works well for static subjects or for quickly focusing and reframing. But what if you are doing a picture of your child playing with a toy? You framed her nicely but she's moving around a bit within your framing enough that you are having to keep adjusting focus. Set to AFF and all the time your shutter is half pressed it will maintain focus on her. It works best for small unpredictable movements but not if she is running around. For that you need AFC. This is continuous autofocus often called predictive focus. Whatever is in the focusing area, the camera will automatically maintain focus on it while the shutter button is half pressed. If the subject is moving fast, it will keep focus by predicting its movements. It's designed for fast but regularly moving subjects like horses or cars. By sheer computational power, it works out where the subject will be at any moment you fire the shutter. In a way, it's a bit like clay pigeon shooting. The shooter aims not where the disc is, but where it will be when the shot crosses its path. The camera focuses not where the racing car is, but where it reckons it will be if and when the shutter actually fires. With its depth from defocus technology, the GH4 is better than previous GHs at AF continuous, but due to the basic mode of operation of MFT focusing, continuous autofocus is not the system's strongest point. For myself, for most sports, I find predictive autofocus overtaken by the sheer incisiveness of AF single. Nonetheless, for fast motion head-on or at an acute angle to the camera, AFC remains the best choice and depth from defocus undeniably improves it. Those were the focusing modes. They control the overall action of the focusing system, single, continuous and so on. Now we come to the AF modes. These control how the lens decides where to focus. First off is pinpoint mode. It is literally pinpoint accurate. Here is a shot of a cat behind a window grill. I focus between the grill squares, smack bang on its eye. With the normal screen view, you can't see accurately enough to put the pinpoint where you want it, so the view automatically enlarges when you half press the shutter. 
you can change for how long it stays enlarged in the custom menu. Next, there's the one area. This is probably the most widely used and certainly the simplest. The camera focuses within the square which appears in the centre of the screen. You can alter the size of the square and also where it appears on the screen. Often it is easiest to focus by half pressing the shutter and then just hold the half press while you change the composition and then fire. If the camera is having trouble focusing, enlarging the focusing area will usually work. Next, Custom Multi. This means you set the shape of the focusing area for yourself. Touch the grid and where the square is set to yellow is the area or areas where the camera will look to choose the focus point. You need a pretty specialised use for this. For me the most useful custom setting is a horizontal one, either the built in one or, as I use, a slightly cut down version of it which I save to one of the three customised memory settings. It works well for shots of a speeding cyclist like this one. Next, and widely used, is 49 Area. I would use this when snap shooting, seeing something I want to shoot and bringing the camera up quickly. It's right more often than you expect and can be quicker than using one area and recomposing. This will assess the frame and place focus where it thinks you will want it. It is remarkably clever at focusing in the right place on bold compositions, but a picture with a bold object in the foreground and your desired point of focus elsewhere naturally can confuse it. You can choose the area it will look at for focus though. Tracking. With this, if you touch the focus object on screen, as it moves, the focus will follow it. It won't work so well if you're moving the camera about. It works best when the camera is fairly static and the subject moves about within the frame. This mode requires a lot of computing power, so it tends to lose subjects in bad light or if they move too fast. I've used it on pics of a singer on stage where I'm including the rest of the band. As the singer moves around, a focus remains on him or her. It can work very well under the right circumstances, but it can also lead to a lot of focus hunting as it loses the subject and then picks it up again. For example, if the guitar player crosses the stage in front of the vocalist. Nonetheless, as you can see in my demo, it is much better on the GH4 than on any previous camera. Face Eye Detection this I find magic for portraits at wide apertures, where you want a very diffused background. The wide aperture necessary means you need accurate focus on the eye nearest the camera. This does that astonishingly well. That covers the main focusing parameters. I mentioned at the beginning that the most common method of instigating autofocus was via a half press of the shutter button. There is also an interesting setting on the AF-AE lock button. This is AF on. That means focusing is performed when you push this button. First set shutter AF to off and engage continuous AF. Now the camera will follow focus when the button is pushed but stop when it is released. I find that continuous AF from half pressing the shutter button makes me feel slightly out of control of the camera. If your focus area strays from your subject it focuses on wherever it is strayed. Back button focusing puts me back in the driving seat. I'm following focus here. But a car crosses between my subject and me. The camera transfers focus to the nearer object. My subject is out of focus. And by the time focus is regained, it's too late. Except it isn't because I took my finger off the focus button. Focus stays where it was and picks up the subject again easily. As a nicety, try switching half press release on the custom menu to on. It gives a hair trigger feel to the camera, which you may like. If you like this back button focusing technique, it's a good idea to set it to one of the custom set memories, since the settings for it are quite specific. To finish off, you can speed up focusing with Quick AF and Eye Sensor AF. Quick AF assumes that when the camera is being held still, you're planning to take a picture and focuses where it is pointing. Eye Sensor AF senses when you put your eye to the electronic viewfinder and then focuses where the camera is pointing. I don't use Quick AF but I do like Eye Sensor AF because when I put my eye to the finder I usually want to view what I am looking at in focus. I feel now like cartoonist Gary Larson's schoolboy character putting his hand up when looking at a blackboard full of mathematical equations. Please sir, can we stop now? My brain's full. I hope this has been helpful and thanks for watching.